This video is going to be about long and basically infinite range riding on e-bikes and e-scooters, whatever you have, without having to carry a generator, having to install a gasoline motor helper. Basically, the ability to extend your range by tanking up just like a gasoline product, but at public charging station. And there are actually quite a number of these around and many of them are even free for charging. And I'll show you all of them. I ask you to check out the links below. I have my book, which is gonna give you all the data on maxing out any bike, electric or not. And check out the new garments I have created. This is uh, a Brompton design in Ferrari red color. I have other designs coming as well, but this is what I have for now. So it's on, on the links below. And I'm giving you links to all of the resources that are featured in this video, as I always do, so that you can do your own research. So basically the, the idea is that, okay, maybe your machine came with a, with a charger that is connecting to a 110 volt outlet, but what if you could plug that into an adapter? So you plug in that 110 into one side of the adapter and the other side of it is going to be something that plugs into most major public charging stations. And that can be, I mean, this is just a 240 volt, but this is not. So these adapters go up to $100, $150 and they are very light compared to carrying extra batteries or a generator. So they seem like like an option to explore and I'll show you how much stuff we have online this is my battery it's actually seven years old at this point you're seeing the price in euros but in, in, in dollar it's not much different it's about 363.70 the price hasn't changed in seven years even though the dollar has lost at least half of its value and this is my charger it's a big boxy charger and you see the electricity coming out on one end and there is another end where you plug in the wire that goes to the electric outlet and there are a variety of wires you can get check this out so you can connect this box and it's written on my box that it can be connected to 110 or at 220 or 240 as well and th that's the plug you see here for example example this is like 120 I don't know what this is 110 and 200 20 or 240 in fact if you are curious I actually rewired my last apartment this was the apartment in Manhattan. I had it until the middle of last year. The price of electricians coming in, breaking out the wall, they had to replace this box. The box was old anyway. And they just installed this one 220-240 outlet and that cost me $5,000. About two days of labor, but they were not working there eight hours a day. It was more like three hours each day. And a lot of it was really just uh, isolating the site with plastic and tape and then cleaning it up. Now this was 5,000 done in two days and I closed it. I have enough professional skills to close a wall like this. If you don't have the skill, you're gonna have to hire somebody and it's gonna cost another thousand dollars and some mass as well. This is the finished job. This is my uh, new electric box and this is my new high powered outlet. The purpose of doing this was to install an electric range. So not really to charge an e-bike or a scooter but that's certainly an option that you have and it doesn't cost that much more to have the electrician give you several outlets so if you want to install a double triple quadruple that's all a possibility but home charging at a higher power is not really what i want to talk about what i want to talk about is public charging so i typed in not even this is the new york suburban area this is manhattan this is the bronx and westchester new jersey upstate new york anywhere you go these charging places are available and i'm just searching for free electric charging i'm not even searching for regular charging the thing is most of these outlets unless they are really busy they give you a, a deal something like you don't have to pay for the first half an hour or the first hour of charging and you just pay after that and even then 
what they charge is really not that much. There are all kinds of different charging companies, EV Connect, Charging Point, Tesla, and that's a problem, although many of them have a kind of a similar charger. This is the Charging Point charger. You see the five holes, two big ones and three small ones. And here's another one. This is Blink, two big holes, three small holes. So they have managed to standardize it to some degree. And they typically even offer you options. Unfortunately, they don't give you a standard 220 outlet that would be so valuable but simply there has not been a demand for it e-bike riders and even people who have bigger scooters have not asked for this option and supposedly you can even charge a tesla that's debatable but typically this is the plug we are looking at this one two big holes in three small ones and that's supposed to be level two charging level three is more complex many of these stations don't really have it but this is like the basic this is the generic lower voltage plug and this is the Tesla, which is the most intense of all of them. This is Blink, not very different. I'm just looking at a station they have in Tarrytown. They have a whole bunch of chargers right there. So I don't even know if this one is a free option, but I actually have ridden in this area just south of the 287 and I know that they do have free charging. In fact, there is a station somewhere around Irvington that gives you an hour of free charging charging. Now I need with 110 volts I need four hours fully charged but in the first two hours I would charge up to about I would say 70 percent. So the way charging works is not like first hour you cover the first 25 percent and then second hour 50 percent and then 75 and 100 percent. No it's like the first two hours you get most of your charging done you're up to 70 or 80 percent and the other two hours are just to charge it up to 100% which is really stressing the battery and it's stressing the whole system. What's amazing is this is a WePad charger even high powered scooters that can do 50-60 miles an hour are being sold with these primitive cheap chargers that can only charge very slowly especially heavy set scooter like this one it's going to charge all night long on 110 but they are from south korea and the official volume at an outlet in voltage is 220 in south korea as well as in most of europe and the far east as well so you might be able to get a charge charger from them or use a locally obtained charger but that's kind of risky because i prefer to get my charger from the manufacturer to make sure I'm not gonna be one of the, one of those people who end up with a lithium-ion battery fire burning down the building. Here is the Vespa. Vespa does sell an electric scooter. It has maybe 30 miles of range, 40 maybe on a good day, and the maximum speed is only 30 miles an hour. So this is really a glorified electric bicycle if you ask me. But let's look at the specs. They claim a four hour charging time for an 86 ampere hour battery. Just as a comparison, I have 13 one three ampere hours so this is at least seven times as much and i take four hours they take four hours as, as well so they would have to have seven times the speed so my understanding is that these numbers are if you have a 240 plug installed at home but what if you don't install it at home and besides having to charge overnight at home is not a big deal the big deal is charging on the road and you can see these guys riding there are videos online where they show you especially people who ride these relatively high powered e-bikes that are really glorified mopeds or electric mopeds with pedals attached to them and i'm giving you the link below check it out you need an adapter to do this but also you need a different charger this is not the stock charger that came with the bike the problem is a lot of these chargers are charging at far higher pressure and speed than was part of the original plan and so there is a concern that you could cause a fire and i don't really even care about my bike catching fire in public at the in the outdoors but what if i do something to the battery that's gonna start breaking it down and then i bring it home and charge it at home at normal speeds and that's when a fire erupts that's my concern so this is really a very new approach a very small number of people have tried it some people love it i have not seen a fire so far but then maybe they would not put that on, on youtube another option you have is not to worry about a charging station at all but to carry the kind of portable panel a solar panel that is probably too big to attach to the bike but you could put it into a trailer and 
when you are done with the first half of your ride, say you rode out, I don't know, 50 miles or 80 miles, then you can take a break, you're on the beach, you're in a park, there's plenty of sunshine. And then you could wait two, three hours and get most of your charge back. So that's also an option, but this is a $500 option. Whereas even if you get a, an upgraded charger, like you see here, and a new cable, that's gonna be a lot cheaper. That's probably gonna be $200, $250, maybe $300. So this is something I definitely want to look at because I know my charger can take 240 volt and so I'm gonna when I get back to New York I'm gonna definitely contact the company if you're interested in this company and their batteries I'm putting a link below they are called EM3 EV not an easy name to remember and they sell all kinds of products and they are very reliable even though the packaging is put together in china the cells themselves are either panasonic lg so if you are interested in a long range setup or infinite range being able to ride around endlessly then this is an option that is worth exploring i just don't think people should use the kind of custom chargers that would drastically accelerate the speed of charging something that was not a part of the original engineering of your battery and to understand what the battery uh, can take you definitely have to read the instructions and contact the manufacturer or whoever sold you your ride i'll be back